So we've talked about generating uh, new variables, but sometimes we just need to recode a variable that already exists. And uh, we often are changing the coding scheme of a particular variable. We may be collapsing categories or making the making a continuous variable into a discrete variable. And actually that's something that happens quite often is when we're taking a continuous um, measurement and make it into a, maybe three different discrete values. So for instance, when we're thinking about BMI, um, you know, it's a continuous measure that goes anywhere from zero to through th through infinity, really, but goes around up to 35 or something like that. Let's say we want to break that down into three categories. Um, so, for instance, looking at this chart, let's say that we want to create a new, we want to recode BMI into a three category variable called obese. So, from zero through 20, uh, we want to call that now one. 20 through 30, we want to call that 2, and 30 or higher, we want to call it 3. Um, the syntax command is a recode. You, there's no abbreviations here. You actually have to type out recode because you're going to be changing the values within that variable. You define what that variable is, and then in the parentheses, you put in the coding scheme. And the coding scheme, like I just said, is the 0 through 20. You specify it by 0 slash mark 20. So that means 0 through 20. And you put an equal sign to what the new recode is going to be. So in this situation, 0 through 20 is going to equal 1. Close the parentheses. The next level is going to be 20. But it's not because 20 was included in the last interval, we have to make it slightly above 20. And here we make it 20.00001 um, just to specify because our original BMI measure inclu includes five decimal points um, just having point zero 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 one higher than 20 makes it into the second category so that's why it's 20 point zero 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 one through 30 equals 2 and the same logic applies to the third level 30 point zero 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 one through the maximum values that are represented now equals 3 so the equal signs here represent the actual new codes that are going to be created. Um, and it's important to know that if we just type recode um, you know, BMI and give it this coding scheme, it's actually going to change the data. And one thing that I like to do is anytime I'm recoding, because I don't want to screw things permanently up, because sometimes I do, I want to generate a new variable on top of that recode. So it leaves the old variable the way it is and um, it generates a new variable with that recode. So looking at my state of do file we can actually see how the commands actually look. So we have uh, recode BMI parentheses 0 slash 20 equals 1 space parentheses 20.000001 slash 30 equals 2 parentheses for the last specification comma now remember comma instead it always means it's an option so here is you know initiate this, this option within the recode command to generate a new variable called obese thereby leaving the old variable intact so we're not gonna really change BMI completely we're just gonna use those old recodes to generate a new obese uh, category or a variable so if you highlight that click on run file we'll see that we have an obese recode and if we look in the data itself we see that the data is just coded from 1 through 3 where 3 for instance this first individual should have a BMI over 30 and he does and so as we go down the line we see people who are in the 20 range are now coded as 2 um, people who are below 20 are coded as 1 and then you could relabel or revalue these the obese variable to actually give it a name. So for instance, I'm going to create a value labels for obese. So I, I uh, first label the, the variable obese as level of obese. Then I define a value label that I called obese itself. So label define obese, 1 equals normal, 2 equals slightly obese, and 3 equals obese. And then I assign that value label to the variable. So here I am, la label value obese to obese. So use the obese value label and apply it to the variable obese. Um, 
And now because all these things are kind of complicated, I always like to double check to make sure everything's all right. So I always tabulate um, BMI, BMI and obese just to see how things worked out. So I'm just going to highlight that and click do here. We click on the screen. We see, first of all, that it ran the coding. And then we see that um, it breaks down by BMI and our coding scheme. So we see these individuals here are uh, 1 and 0, 0 for slightly obese and obese. So that's good. And basically what we want to see is that the coding scheme uh, lines up per perfectly with the BMI, uh, which it does. Um, one thing we might want to do at this point is uh, not only do a tabulation, but also maybe do a tabulation of obese over sex and see if there's a relationship between sex and obesity. And that is just a tab obese sex. So again, we're listing two variables to cross tabulate. The comma means it's an option of the tabulate command. And the option here is a chi-square test. So just highlight that and do the do file. And so we see the cross tabulation here. We see uh, we have two normal females and four normal females, seven slightly obese females, eight slightly obese females, three obese females, and one obese males. And then it gives us the chi-square of 1.69. Uh, and if you want to know what that means in terms of a probability, it's 0.428. And how we interpret that is, is because it's above 0.05, um, there is no statistical relationship between sex and uh, obesity. Uh, they're independent of each other according to this analysis. There is no systematic difference between the genders in terms of this variable. And uh, the last data command that we want to talk about today in terms of manipulation is the replace command. Um, we've talked about generating recode and replace. And replace is a nice uh, feature to use when you have missing data points and you want to impute um, a value for those missing data points. For instance, if we look and state of the data browser, uh, those five measures of blood levels that we're talking about, you notice the periods here. Uh, signifies that they're missing data points and maybe for our analysis um, it really kind of hinders the ability to do maybe a particular analysis if we have that many data points missing and we may want to maybe compute or impute a value that is in between um, this value and this value that is taking the value of at zero 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 and look at the value of zero six zero and calculate what 030 may be. And the replace command is quite handy for that. If you look at uh, the stata command that I'm going to run in a second, I'm going to basically look at um, if there are missing values at that min 030, so 30 minutes after somebody had breakfast, um, I want it to replace that variable. If it equals, replace that variable with this specified function, which is take uh, the variable that came before it and the variable that came after it added up, added it up and divided by two. So just take an average of those two. If and this is the important um, clause, if min thirty equals missing. Um, so it's not going to do anything unless that data point is already missing. So it's not going to replace all of the the va values for that variable. It's just going to replace it if it's missing. And you notice here we have two equal sign and um, I'm going to do the same logic for if there's missing values for at 60 minutes after breakfast um, I'm going to take the value at 30 minutes and the value at 90 minutes add them up divided by 2 and replace it if min 60 is missing and if min 90 is missing the same logic take the values at 60 and at 120 minutes after breakfast divided by 2 and replace it if min 90 equals missing if you look at my do file, you see that's exactly what I'm doing. And um, just you, replace is the verb command here, and min is the variable that we're specifying. Um, and I just need to highlight it and click on do. And the changes were made. And if I look at my data browser, you notice all the missing values now for the this is a permanent change uh, you can't really go back after you've done this um, so you know you need to be careful when you're gonna do it and that's why there's also no abbreviation uh, for replace uh, all the commands that you can actually do some serious damage to your to your data stata doesn't allow you to 
do the shortcuts. You have to actually spell out replace or recode instead of just typing in R because of that of that danger. So make sure you know why you want to replace or recode something. The last thing we're going to talk about today is the string variable of sex. Um, males and females, uh, as we said earlier, it's just coded as M and F. Um, and this will be fine if we're just going to do cross tabs, but if you really want to do something like a regression or something like that, um, we really want to look this look at this as a numerical value. And so we can use the replace command to also make these changes to the sex string variable. Um, use it with combinations with a generate uh, command. So here you can see that I, I, I'm creating a new variable called gender. So generate gender. And, the, and you might see this when you're looking at syntax. The very first thing people do when they create a new variable is that, that they create the variable as having all missing values. So generate equals period. So create a new variable where everybody is considered missing. You know, and why we do that is just that, that's the way where you, you make sure you at least you capture all the missing values in that very beginning. Then we go back and we place um, gender. So replace gender. If replace gender equals zero, and you give the clause if sex equals equals f. So go back to this new variable we just created and replace the missing with a zero if that respondent was coded as f on the sex variable. And the same logic if you want to code it for 1. Replace gender equals 1 if clause sex equals equals m. And um, we got to put the uh, quotation marks here because it was a string variable. And uh, you may be wondering why do we need only one equal sign here and, and two equal signs here. Well, the equal signs here is just creating a variable. Whereas here it's locating a particular value with the if clause. So the if clause is always going to require uh, two equal signs, whereas just generating new variable will just require one. So here in the do file, you'll see that the first thing I have is generate gender equals missing, replace this new variable gender equals zero, if I have an of here, so that's okay, I'm just going to type in if sex equals f, and then I have replace gender is one if sex equals m. Then I go ahead and label that variable, give the value labels. I'll call it gender, and then I assign that value label to the variable gender. Uh, highlight, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and also highlight this tabulate, because like I said, anytime I generate a new variable, I like to tabulate to make sure everything's all right, and click on do, and uh, we see it got coded perfectly. The sex people who are female are now considered female in my new variable, and sex people who are male as a string variable are now coded as, thir as male in my numerical gender variable. Okay, so today we covered the replace, the generate, and the recode variable, so now you know how to manipulate data. Next time we're going to talk about regression 